Good morning, everybody watching Revival Fires this morning. It's great to have you with us here at Church Online Sunday morning. I want to welcome every one of you, church family, visitors. Some might have been given a link and this might be your first time watching. You are so welcome. Now, I've been hearing that even though we're not at church, we're at home. Some of you have been standing up and putting your hands up and dancing in God's presence. You know, it's just as if we're all together. And I want to encourage you, just bask in God's presence. Give him your worship this morning as we're together worshiping with a band. I want, I want you to remember you can join in on Facebook or YouTube and you can comment. You can go there in the chat room and our pastoral team will be right there to respond to you. So do join in with us as if we're chatting together. And now, why don't we just take some time entering God's presence, giving him our love because he's pouring out his love on us this morning. God bless you.
thank you, Jesus, for your presence that surrounds us. Every time we look to you, every time we praise you, God, your presence can fill this place.
look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you.
Welcome everyone. It's great to be with you again and to bring to you on the back of the worship what I believe God wants to speak into our hearts this morning. And so I want you to really be equipped in these days to be an overcomer, to be one who knows how to be restored and to recover everything. You know, in these days, I don't know about you, but there's been all of the road wrecks in terms of the haircuts that men are doing upon themselves. I don't think I've done a bad job on myself this week. But you know, they say that every haircut is only six days old. After six days, it'll be back to normal. Well, pretty much back to normal. But you know, there is a story in the Bible about God, who is the great hair restorer. And that's what I want to focus in on this morning. That's what I want to help you with so that you can go forward and see God as the overcomer in your life. You know, Janita was singing earlier, this is how I fight my battles. I wonder how you fight your battles. I wonder how you overcome, because every one of us will have things in our past that we have overcome. Let me tell you, no one is a failure. I believe that we all have those small victories in our lives And God wants to turn your greatest defeat. You know, sometimes we've had a victory and then we face defeat. That was like the story in the book of Judges with regard to Samuel, uh, Samson. He had great victories, but he also had one of his greatest defeats. And I believe that God wants to bring you this morning into your greatest victory in the place of your greatest defeat. Do you remember Peter? I was talking about it in communion, today's communion, and how in his greatest defeat, God brought a victory. That is, he overcome the very thing that was hindering him pursuing the presence of Jesus, and that was his fear of death. And so here in this story where you see Samson overcoming the Philistines, but I want to take you back in the story to a verse that's found in Judges chapter 14 before we get to Judges 16. And in Judges 14 verse 3 and 4 it says these words, Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she is right in my eyes. And then it says, his father and mother did not know that it was from the Lord, for he was seeking an opportunity against the Philistines. And at that time, the Philistines ruled over all of Israel. I believe that God is wanting you to overcome. Overcome where you are being ruled over. I don't know what it is in your life that you're being ruled over. It could be you're being ruled over by this pandemic. It could be that you're being ruled over by the circumstance and situation that you find yourself. It may be that you're being ruled over by your furloughing. It may be that you're being ruled over by now being in such close proximity to people who you love, but you've never had this extended time where you're all together. And so there comes times when pressures are upon us and we are ruled by the negative things that come into our lives. The Philistines was a negative thing that had come into their lives. But you see, God has a purpose. I want you to know that whatever is going on, God has a purpose. He is the great restorer in our lives. And so here the story is that 
Samson is taken captive by the Philistines. The first thing that they did was they took out of his eyes the very thing that caused him to fail was his eyesight. He saw a girl of the Philistines. You know, as we look at our lives, there is always a lure and an enticement that the enemy will have for us all. I believe we can easily be lured into what is lure. Lure is a bait that the enemy uses in order to take us captive. I'm reminded of the time when I would be fly fishing and you would make lures. Lures look as close to the real thing as is possible, but they're not. And here, you see, the enemy had lured Samson into a place where he was defeated. You see, the lure was an enticement. It was a seduction. It was something that excited him. And it captivated him because he was fascinated by it. I wonder in these times if there are things that you're allowing to fascinate you. Because I believe that God wants to bring you to a place of victory. This was always there in the life of Samson, but God was about to deal with it and to deal with it for good in order for him to get a victory. You see, here a lure has an attractive quality in order to draw you into a place where you're taken captive. And that's exactly what happened in the life of Samson. And so here, as we look at Samson, you see the thing he had done, he had used the very anointing of God upon his life and he used it as a plaything. And what happened was he had then become the very thing that he had made the anointing become. And it says here that once he was taken captive, they took out his eyes. It says to them that they took out his eyes, they bound him with bronze shackles, and they set him to grinding in the prison. He was blind, he was bound, and he was bruised. And then they go on. When they were in high spirits, they shouted, bring out Samson to entertain us. So they brought him out of prison and he performed for them. What a tragedy. See, I believe that as we're in this time, God has a purpose. I believe he's brought the church back to a new place. I believe he's bringing us into a new place. He's bringing us into a new place where we recover the anointing, where we recover the power of God in a new way upon our lives so that we may reach out and we may deliver others who are held captive by fears, held captive by things that have taken hold of their lives. And God has given us great opportunity in these days. You know, I'm hearing this week of people who've gone out with the food bank and delivering food parcels, and people are beginning to share with them their fears. They're beginning to share with them their concerns. They're beginning to share with them the deep things that are affecting their lives. God is positioning us in new places. And so here, God was going to take him from the place where he was an entertainment and an addendum to other people's desires in to be entertained. And he was going to put him right back into central place so that he could receive again the anointing of God upon his life. You see, in the midst of our downfall, God can position us strategically to fulfill his purpose. 
Samson aligns himself with God's purpose, positions himself in alignment with God's purpose. Let me read to these verses in 26 and 27 of chapter um, 16. When they stood Samson amongst the pillars, Samson said to the servant who held his hand, put me where I can feel the pillars that support the temple that I may lean against them. I mean, here he was being repositioned, taken from the prison and brought into center place. I believe that God is bringing the church into center place. I believe that one of the idols, it was Dagon in those days, but I believe one of the idols that God is dealing with in Western society is the idol of mammon, where we have put our faith and our trust in the financial markets, in the finance, or in the possessions that we can um, purchase for ourselves in order to make ourselves feel a little bit better. I believe that God is removing Moving the power of mammon from us. Hallelujah. And I believe we're going to come out of this stronger, not weaker. And so here, Samson aligns himself. He is strategically placed. I believe that God is about to strategically place you. Do you remember Peter? Peter, in his failure, said, I will go with you to the cross. I'll even go to death with you. I'll never desert you. And yet he comes to a point when he is just like all the others, keeping a safe distance. And Jesus says, Peter, Satan's desire to have you that he might sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. And when you have turned, when you have been restored, then I want you to strengthen your brothers. You see, his weakness was going to position him in order to be the greatest strength he could be in the lives of of other people. I believe this story in Samson is very akin to that. You see, Samson, he returns back to the place of his empowerment. Here, how does he re return to that place of empowerment? Listen to what it says Samson prayed to the Lord. See, that is the place I don't know about you. But my prayer life has become a lot more clear, a lot more specific, a lot more um, focused in these days. As we're removed from all the distractions, God brings us back to that place of prayer. And here what he says is sovereign Lord Adonai the one who is above all, the one who rules over all. It says, Lord, remember me, O God, and strengthen me just once more. See, all the times that he'd felt the power of God flowing in, I want you to remember the times when the anointing of God has moved on your life. It says, in, chap <coughs> in chapter 14, it talks there about and the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord began to stir Samson. See, when was that time when God began to stir you? See, as you remember the Lord, remember the stirrings of God. Because here he's saying, Lord, remember me this one more time. Of all the times I've known you, stirring me, I've known you, anointing me, coming into a place, and Lord, now here I am. I'm blind, I'm bound, and I'm bruised. You know, that's a direct correlation to Isaiah chapter 60 where it talks there, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to open the eyes of the blind, to release the captives and to um, release those who are bruised. 
See, that's what Samson was in the prison. But here he was a remembering the anointing. I want you in these days to remember the anointing. Remember the anointing of God upon your life because he is about to come with a fresh anointing and a fresh empowerment upon your life. And that fresh anointing, that fresh empowerment, what it will do, it will strategically put you, place your hands in order to release the utmost power of God like you've never known before. Listen, this isn't waiting until all of this is over. This is now that we have opportunities to minister in the power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to receive a fresh anointing I want you to realize that something is happening. I've been talking this week about our lives, having times in our life where things are terminated. You see, there was a season in Samson's life where it was terminated, where the mixture, you've heard me say before, Bobby Connor says God's going to give his spirit without limit to a people without mixture. I believe that God was terminating the mixtures in Samson's life. This is a time when God is about to terminate our mixtures and we're going to come forth like gold, sifted like wheat, because Jesus is praying for us in order that we might be empowered. And listen, don't don't give up on the small signs that are happening. You know, they're talking now. There seems to be a little light at the end of the tunnel. We're beginning to see the green shoots. Well, I believe we're beginning to see our hair is growing again. The great hair restorer is beginning to minister to us. And so in all of this, you see, as he was in the prison, something was happening. He was in a place of inactivity. He was in a place where he was bound. He was in a place where it could be looking at as if nothing was taking place, but something was happening. And that something was that the hair had begun to grow. See, no matter how bad the haircut was, it will grow again. And it began to grow again. And in that, covenant was beginning to be restored. See, God was beginning to give to him another opportunity. So in the place of inactivity, God was giving him an opportunity. And here he recognized that is the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. God's going to cause your faith to grow again. Jesus said to Peter, Peter, I'm praying that your faith doesn't fail. I believe God is causing your faith to grow again. How much faith do you need to grow a mustard seed. I said this this week, the mountain in front of you, I don't care how great the giants are in front of you. That's all the Philistines are. They just put up the best that the world can offer. They want to bring ease when you're carrying the ark, so we'll pay, give you a cart, but then it ends in death. We want to fight well, we we'll just put a giant in front of you. See, they use worldly wisdom in order to intimidate us. See, what is worldly wisdom? Wise regarding the affairs of the world or the natural realm. I'm talking about you coming into a spiritual realm, a new dimension of faith, a new dimension of anointing. And hear this story. This is what we need in these days. We don't need vaccines. Well, you know, listen, it's great if they get a vaccine. But listen, even before the vaccine, we can see God move in power. We can see God removing fears out of people's lives. We can see God healing the sick, restoring those who are weak. 
giving power to the broken. God wants to come in new ways. And so here, he was beginning to see his faith rise again. You see, the mountain in front of you has reached its growth potential. You see, with Goliath in the face of David, he had reached his growth potential. But you see, the faith of David was still growing. See, that faith that David had, he took five stones. He took his slingshot. And it says, you come to me with a sword and a spear. You come to me with the strength of the world. You come to me with the powers of this natural realm. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he it is who will give you into my hands today. You see, your seed faith has unlimited potential. Your seed faith is equal to the giant to the mountain that you're facing. And I believe that God is going to cause faith to grow. How much faith do you need? A mustard seed. A mustard seed for the mountain in front of you. And so here, Samson, when he is realigned with God's purpose, his hands are strategically Placed to release the maximum power with the minimum effort. You see, he didn't need restoration of his eyesight. What he needed was a guide. Do you remember with Peter, where he said to Peter, Peter, when you were young, you went wherever you wanted to, but when you're old, someone else will lead you. By this, he was telling him what death he would die. Bringing Peter right back full circle to face the very fear that caused him to pull back. And so here with Samson, what did he need? He didn't need his eyes. He needed someone who could guide him to place his hands strategically on the pillars to find the weakest point so that he could re release the maximum power. That is what God is about to do for you. And I sense that as we come into this new week, as we're making our way to Pentecost, God is about to release an anointing upon us where we accomplish more from this point on than we've accomplished up to this point. I was only reminded this week that on the 21st of April, 12 years ago, is when we began the outpouring here in Dudley and here I am in the main hall here at Revival Fires and um, preaching online and is all I have is one person who is in audience with me this morning and uh, another person behind the camera but that night on the 21st of April there was over 1100 people in this place. But let me tell you, I believe that we are coming into a greater anointing than 12 years ago. 12 is apostolic authority. I believe that we're coming into a new place where God is going to release apostolic authority. What is apostolic authority? It's a saints led ministry, and it is a saints led anointing that God is going to put upon us so that we come into the fullness. And you see, Samson's anointing enabled him to release the maximum power with the minimum of effort. You know, as we were worshipping here this morning and I joined the worship team to worship here, and when um, Janita was singing, this is how I fight my battles... And I thought, Lord, how do we fight our battles in these days? We put God in remembrance. Put yourself in a new place of faith. Put your hands 
in the place of the enemy's weakness and put your strength in the power of God because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Yes, we're waiting for change to come, but our hair is growing. Our faith is growing. And when God causes that turning to take place, we will be in a place to strengthen those who are weak. We'll be in a place to release blessing on those who feel impoverished. And we can say this morning, I've seen you move. Now move this mountain. I believe God wants to move mountains, but he wants you to have the faith in him who is the mountain mover. And so as we come into this coming week, let us come with a fresh sense of God rekindling faith in us. You see, it's faith in God that releases the anointing of God. And so have faith in God. Have faith that whatever it is you're facing, whatever situation you're facing, have faith that he is the God who can move mountains. He's the God who can release an anointing upon and then an anointing through you so that you can place your hands strategically to release the maximum power so you have your greatest victory in these times. Let me pray for you this morning. Father, I pray that you will cause faith to grow in proportion to the mountains that we face or the Goliath that's in front of us. Lord, I pray and I decree over everyone this morning that faith would rise. And as it rises, you would strategically position us, realign us with your presence so that we can strategically release your power to the mountains that we face and the mountains that other people face, that we will become mountain movers, giant slayers, that we will become water dividers so that your people may walk through all of these things that face us at this time. So I release blessing upon you today in the name of Jesus. You know, and as we come to bring our offerings this morning, and as we come to release all that God has for us by releasing what we have to him, this is a first fruit offering. It is the month of Issachar. Issachar is the month of the prophetic anointing. It says in 1 Chronicles 12, verse 32, and the men of Issachar understood the times and they knew what the people, and the people of Israel knew what they should do. See, I believe that God wants to release his prophetic word. And as we bring our offering this morning, I believe that we're stepping into a prophetic anointing, that prophetic anointing for God to do in you something new. So why don't you get your gifts, get your first fruit, Get your offerings ready. Get your tithes ready. And as the worship team comes back, let's bring, let's bring our first fruit offering so that we can continue to release the ministry of revival fires into the nations of the world. So God bless you as you bring your offerings this morning. And may God pour out his richest blessing upon you. Let's bring our offering as the team lead us back into that place of worship. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy 
of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Jesus Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say Jesus for your presence. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives and we pray that you'd have a fantastic week and we look, can't wait to meet you and to see you again as we connect via Zoom right now. But uh, watch all the ways that we can stay connected and we really believe you have a fantastic week. God bless you.